Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. I'm just telling you, they're here. I think they're transit. Kim's talking me right out of my spot. I think we caught all of them here. I can't believe a scuba diver would say that. I'm not seeing any bait. Timing is everything. Hardest day of the year. We think they're doing one thing, and those fish are doing something different. It's late January, and the local residents offer their cordial welcome to the Hook and Look crew, who've made their annual exodus south. This is a land of wintering birds, moss-laden cypress, and a very familiar mouse. Yes, the Orlando area is one of the world's most visited destinations for tourist attractions, which includes trophy bass fishing. And no one knows this detail more than today's guest, Art Ferguson of Art of Fishing Guide Service. I mean, we waited a while this morning because it was a little chilly this morning. A little chilly. But uh, Florida bass are odd when it comes to that, the cold fronts, but we'll see. We'll try a few things and figure out something to give them a We'll bite. figure them out. Yeah. Well, let's I've go, got man. Got a few hours on this water. We'll figure it out. I was ice fishing last week. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it may be a little chilly in Florida, but it's not that cold. The bait du jour is one of Strike King's versatile swim baits, the Swimming Caffeine Shad. Swimming Caffeine Shad coming at you. It features the body style of the original Caffeine Shad, but with the addition of a heavy kicking paddle tail. Now this winter so far, it's, it's been pretty inconsistent. Cold, a lot of cold fronts coming through. This has been one of our colder, colder uh, winters so far in a long time. Been inconsistent, but the fish keep biting. Yeah. You know, we, everyone's like surprised. They're, they're biting through it. Fish try to move up and spawn, and then they're getting pushed back a little bit. So I don't think we've had a great spawn yet up here. Hopefully, this is the end of it for a while. <laughs> ah, I got him in the boat. <laughs> well, good. It's a start. It's not one of them big. No. Log heads. No. <laughs> I just had a bite right there too, so. It's a good sign. They'll school up out here. All right. All right, let's catch one of them big ones. Yeah, you can catch a 12-incher out here, Kim, or you can catch a 10-pounder <laughs> next cast. <laughs> That's the amazing thing about Florida. Yeah. Just, you never know. A lot of little fish, but boy, there's some big ones. A lot of fun. Good sign, though. Good yeah. sign. Yeah. There's a scattered weeds across this. Is it mostly hydrilla? Or I guess I'll find that out underwater. Yeah, exactly. All the years I spent down here, I don't know the weeds that well. There's one dude. There Big you fish. go. Good fish? Big fish. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Right. Let me get the net. Oh, I lost it. Are you kidding oh, me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but they're biting this thing. That was a good one. Swimming caffeine, Chad. Ah, let's keep the kids Oh, going. under pressure. The camera got me, Kim. <laughs> Kim and I started today throwing swim baits. We're, we're anticipating a bite where these fish are moving and, and grooving and we can get on this moving bait bite and we're so excited. And by the time we're done figuring out the pattern, the fish are on the bottom and we're catching throwing a swim bait on a Carolina rig. There he is. There he is. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You got it. Well, Carolina rig. Change up a little bit. Same bait and a different presentation. Carolina rig, just Changed a different. Up. Change up. Same different. bait, same bait. That's right. Different presentation. Presentation. We'll get them now. Oh. I think we just figured it out. A nice. You know, I mean, they get a lot bigger in that in Florida here, and hopefully we do find them. Big cold front, we can't ask for anything more. We'll just keep fishing, and hopefully a big one bites. Yeah. All righty. Cool. Get 
back there fish. Carolina rig is a no-brainer when you throw it in front yeah. of one of the things, you know? Busts through the weeds, gets their attention, that little thing comes by and bam! The Carolina rig continues to pay off when Hook and Look returns. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Seaguar, trust Seaguar when everything is on the line. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. The original Owacky Tool, your soft bait's best mate. And by Indian River Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure water, pure trails, pure north. Kim, the last time I was watching you filming, you were winning the Bassmaster Top 100. That's the last time we, we were around the camera at the same time. That was 1994, the Michigan Top 100. Art was my camera boat guy. Yeah, I did not qualify for that. Got to watch you win it, it's pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. You, you were the first one to congratulate me. Yeah? Yep. I remember that, and Denny Brower was the second when we were coming <laughs> in. Yeah. That was a very memorable time, to be able to win you know, a major tournament at home. <sighs> the first time Michigan ever had a Bassmaster event. Dream come true. That was. Art too accrued a long list of tournament accolades in his career, including both a Bassmaster Top 150 and Bassmaster Open title, along with four Bassmaster Classic appearances. There's a fish there. There's a fish. Yep, it is. Good one, too. Good one. Good one, good, 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 good. Yeah, that's a good one. Let me get that for you. There you go. All right. There we go, Art. I had to slow down again. That's it. That's it. Very what do you call nice. that? That is the swim and caffeine shed. Okay. We're liking it. And yeah, like it. but it shows you the different ways you can can throw a caffeine shed, a, a swimming caffeine shed. True. Carolina rig, belly weighted hook. Works for me. You got it. Ah. You got it. Good job, man. A lot of times out here, these fish are in spots about the size of a boat. They'll get so tight bunched up. It's so important to be able to mark that, whether GPS or you right. know, just throw a marker buoy out just for that exact reason. The wind's blowing hard, and man, oh man, you can miss the boat out here if you don't get yeah. right back on that spot. This is a big fish bait, I guarantee you. Yeah, good one, Art. Good size? Feels good. This is almost as tough as a tournament because you've got to get them in the boat once you get them on. Incoming. Incoming. <laughs> I think he had well, some. Well, that was another keeper. I think he had some vegetation in his mouth when that one bit. <laughs> yeah. Florida bass. Yeah. We're doing what we can do. And the next bite could be like that. Yeah. So good, good job. Another one on the Carolina rig. Yep. Well, we've been able to scratch up a few fish on the Carolina rig, and Art retained his perception that the school of big fish were surely residents of the particular areas we fished, and that they just weren't biting. I, on the other hand, was beginning to have my doubts. Kim, Kim's talking me right out of my spot. He's telling me they're not here anymore. No. <laughs> I know you could catch them if they were. But what sucks is just right before you got here, I was catching they were, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that. I know. And we've gotten a bite or two. But... I know, just need to key in on it and we're not. Hardest day of the year trying to catch a bass when I'm doing a TV show. Caught them every time I fish this this year. I can understand Art's frustration. After all, the previous week, he had guided Mark Schaefer on an unbelievable trip, hooking in the several three to five pounders anchored by this nine pound, 11 ounce beast, fishing the same areas we fished this morning. I'm just telling you, they're here. Make my living out here. 
caught a majority over the years in Florida, the big bass. Not only in the afternoon, but when those cumulus clouds are out. I think we caught all of them here. I can't believe a scuba diver would say that. <laughs> I just... How many bass do you see in the area? But I've also done the opposite too. You never know until you get in the water. And coming up next, that's precisely what he'll do. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kim Stricker from Hook and Look. Every year I come to Florida, and when I do, I always stop at PowerPole. And this year they surprised me and installed the new PowerPole charge in my boat. I've been out here fishing in the Orlando area for a couple of days now, and one thing I've noticed is I'm getting a lot more time and power out of my batteries. And it's all because my power pole charge is managing my battery's power more efficiently. Another reason I'm getting more time and power out of my batteries is because of the charge on the run feature. This uses power from my alternator to charge all my batteries anytime I move from spot to spot. And with the SeaMonster app, I can see the voltage and state of charge of all my batteries so I can make better decisions while on the water. And at the end of the day, I simply plug it into my AC outlet and it will charge, balance, and condition my batteries like nothing else on the market. Welcome back to Hook and Look. Kim and his guest, Art Ferguson, have been dragging a swim in caffeine shad, Carolina rig. In lieu of catching less than expected in the target areas, there's a budding discrepancy between the two anglers as to the position of the fish. Kim, Kim's talking me right out of my spots. He's telling me they're not here anymore. Art sums it up with a psychological quandary that all fishermen experience from time to time. We think they're doing one thing and those fish are doing something different. And that's what that underwater stuff's all about. Kim can show you. I dove was an offshore hump Art and I had thoroughly fished the previous day. And just like our fishing success, I only encountered a few small males. This flat goes from the 12 foot of water up to the There's a lot of pepper grass here. And we were catching them in this stuff. These weeds, which we refer to as pepper grass, are in reality Illinois pondweed. This is a very common submerged plant and is native to Florida. You know, if you think about it, it's kind of comical that we're fishing in Florida around Illinois pondweed with a Carolina rig. It's not easy in Florida for the exception of the spring to find half the water that's got enough clarity for me to dive in, but this works. If you come up to the hump, you can see how the uh, pepper grass thins out. In the sand, you've got these places where they likely bend. I mean, this is a beautiful bed I'm looking at right now, but nobody's at home yet. They just said the actors haven't showed up. Both of us have been coming in and out of Florida. have really kind of held them back. What I'm seeing and what we were catching were basically those males. You know, another week or so, there's going to be giants sitting on me. Time we use everything. <laughs> With Art's recommendation, the second area I explored was a thick weed edge that quickly dropped into a deep hole. Again, the aquatic vegetation was Illinois pondweed, and I did come across one bass around three pounds that was cruising the edge. Just keep going and find some more fish. 
Next, I wanted to investigate the water just outside the emergent semi grass that grows near shore. The depth averaged around eight feet, and where I found patches of eelgrass, I found some bass relating to it. But again, they weren't the Florida pigs I was looking for. I want to see those big pigs. From my experience, this is basically what I was expecting after fishing it. Everybody talked about, oh, they're down there, they're down there. I think they're transit. The big school, the big ones, are transit and are following the, the pace. And if you fish around spots that they normally swim by, you catch them. But being able to see them may be a different story. The kicker to all this kind of blew me away. And you may have noticed in my video, I dove in covered water for nearly two hours at a variety of depths and never saw a single sign of any bait fish. Not a single bluegill, shad, or shiner. Nothing. I'm not seeing any bait. I'm not seeing any bluegills or uh, shiners or anything. That's why I think that that bait fish is transient, that the bass are chasing, the birds are chasing. One thing that Art said while we were fishing came to mind that further substantiated my thinking. He most of the time I'm catching these fish when we're doing shiners, the fish are up on top. When bass are pelagic, they roam the open water, spending a great deal of time in the upper water column. Being neither close to the bottom nor the shoreline, they follow the transient schools of bait fish. And as we've shown in previous episodes, when they feed, push the bait towards the surface, in turn attracting the birds. In hindsight, maybe we should have done a red-eye shad show and followed the birds all day. We'll be right back. Stick around. There's more to learn right after this short break. Stay tuned. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. Cush it, world's most comfortable rod butt. And by Sportfish Michigan, your source for the top charter captains and guides. Come on fish, give us a little sign that you're up here. Feels like we should be catching some fish. Yep, good one. Little guy's a bass, though. Well, that's a fish. You didn't. Do you need to look with that? What's well, a keeper? <laughs> keeper. Now you're gonna make me uh, throw the Carolina rig again. Looks like he's half crappie. He does. Isn't that weird? I was gonna say the coloration on that thing. That is bizarre. It's different. He's spotted all over. That is weird color. Yep. There are a number of ways to present soft plastics, and few are as effective as a Carolina rig. I start with a tour grade tungsten weight, then a little glass bead, then a swivel. That's the first half of the Carolina rig. And what I'm using here is 20 pound Tatsu fluorocarbon. So I've got 20 pound on my main line. But then I'll take 15 pound, maybe 12 pound, maybe even 10 pound, but a less strength line on my leader. Because if you get hooked up, it allows you just to break off the leader and not all this other terminal tackle. Again, we're fishing the watermelon red flake. This is a four-aught wide gap hook. And we'll just Put it in about three-eighths of an inch. You twist it back around. The uh, caffeine shad has a little split right here, and you want to bring the hook through the split and bring it up right to the center of the worm. And then I push up on it and bury just skin hook it there. So that's the rig. And what's nice about the Carolina rig, with the weight in front of the worm, is the weight, bead, and the swivel all disturb the bottom. And it'll bounce on the bottom, it'll kick up the dust on the bottom, and it'll rip through the weeds 
causing a commotion, getting the fish's attention, it'll turn, look at it, and the next thing you see is the swimming caffeine shad coming by, and that's when they grab it. Decent fish, too. Nice, nice fish, nice fish. Yes, sir. Nice fish. Yes, yeah. sir. That's better. <laughs> Get that on. I'm going to throw a buoy out real quick. Finally, a little better fish. Pulled off that flat a little bit. Yep. Caught that big one. I mean, we're out in 11, 12 foot of water now. Yeah. We just saw a hump here that had beds all over it, but not a single fish. They weren't clean, barely. Another nice, nice fish. Very good. Cool. Let's do it again. Thank you, fish. Well, Art and I did have to work at catching them today, and unfortunately never hooked up with one of those Florida giants like Art's client, Mark Schaefer, did. But it's exciting just knowing that with each cast, it could happen. If you're gonna be in the Orlando area this winter, give Art of Fishing a call and get out on one of these beautiful Florida lakes. And be sure to tune in again next week for another episode of Hook and Luck. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.